Hey everyone, before I get into this video, I want to announce just right out here at the front that if we get to 50,000 subscribers before the launch of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, I will be giving away one of those next generation consoles and or a Nintendo Switch uh, to one lucky winner. It'll be their choice if we happen to not be able to get you one around launch time because obviously there could be limited stock and pre-orders aren't even up in general. Uh, I will get you a gift card to your favorite retailer that you prefer to buy it from if that is something you would rather have instead or obviously we will wait until they come back in stock and then I'll get one shipped to your house. Right now, the giveaway is limited to the North America region Region. However, I am considering opening it up uh, worldwide, uh, but right now the giveaway is not actually occurring <laughs> because we have to hit 50,000 subscribers. I made this mistake before. We're not going to start the giveaway yet. This is a if we hit 50K uh, before basically November, uh, we will do the giveaway then. Uh, that being said, throwing that aside, there is a new giveaway heading into the month of August. You need to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, comment down below, and like this video to enter that giveaway. And that giveaway is for Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Uh, you could pick a PlayStation 4 version or a Switch version if you like, since those are the two systems it's coming to. And hey, let's get into this news, which actually deals with Xbox, because Xbox is doing something really cool. Um, according to Jeff Grubb, they're getting rid of the subscription fee on uh, Xbox Live Gold. You'll be able to play online multiplayer for free. Now, this could be because they're pushing Game Pass and they, and they might have another subscription fee for, say, uh, their xCloud service. So Microsoft might see the subscription fee stacks getting a little, little tall. You're asking a little much of consumers. Uh, and they want to push more towards the Game Pass slash, um, you know, cloud uh, gaming subscription model and get away from that. And it's interesting because obviously we, as far as we're aware, uh, Sony is not dropping the subscription fee for the PlayStation Network. In fact, they don't seem to have plans for an xCloud-like service or a Game Pass-like service. Um, you know, Nintendo just started charging for online uh, with the Switch. And now here we have Microsoft, the company that started all of this online subscription fees to play online multiplayer games, taking it away. Uh, now, this is according to Jeff Grubb, who has been an industry insider for quite some time with Microsoft. And when he says things like this, they basically always happen. And this could be one of the big announcements that Microsoft might have coming uh, in supposed events happening in August, because Phil Spencer mentioned that they have a couple events for the Xbox Series X happening in August. Uh, we don't know the exact dates of it yet, but um, pretty crazy that this is happening. But to be honest, this is like the latest in a long string of moves that has happened since Phil Spencer took over that's extremely pro-consumer. And I feel like because, you know, Halo Infinite didn't look the, the, the best visually and had a lot of pop in um, and, and there's just been kind of this focus on Halo Infinite and all that, even though 343 did respond with actually a really nice response. And uh, I, I plan to get into that uh, maybe a little bit here um, later today. But I want to focus on the fact that because of stuff like that and uh, people having console bias or, or, or just preferring a Switch or preferring a, a PlayStation, we're ignoring that Microsoft has been doing the most pro-consumer moves of the three major platform holders. And I want to give credit to Reset Era user uh, Montresor for kind of bringing this all to light. Uh, but let's take a look at their post that combines all the things that they have done um, that's extremely pro-consumer and Microsoft should get a lot more credit for and maybe even a lot more sales because of with the Series X. So let's check this out. So in 2018, I was really impressed with the pro-consumer moves Microsoft had made since the launch of the Xbox One, so much so that I made the following thread. Okay, with the rumored news, Microsoft will no longer have an Xbox Live Gold paywall. Again, we just talked about that. I think Microsoft is continuing their aggressive moves towards offering a more inclusive pro-consumer product to its consumers. Break it down. The list of pro-consumer moves looks like this. One, open to cross-play across all platforms, whether it's Steam, Windows 10, Xbox, Android, iOS, Switch, and PlayStation 4. They've been completely open to it the whole time. Uh, two, allows Steam-like refunds for any game you've played less than two hours and owned for less than 14 days. Uh, you may remove this from the list as I can't remember if this is still active. This was something they had going on. I'm Again, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they still do this because I've never actually requested a refund, but they were allowing that at one point. Um, 
So, I don't know. Maybe one of you guys can let me know if they're still doing that. Uh, number three, supports backward compatibility for 360 and original Xbox games on the Xbox Series X. Um, supports X enhancements for backwards compatible games, both 360 and original Xbox. So basically, um, there could be free uh, packs released, free enhancement packs for 360 and Xbox games coming out on the Xbox Series X to make them look even better in 4K and all that jazz. Uh, absolutely free. They're not charging for that. Um, any backwards compatibility game that you already own digitally or on disc works without paying extra, right? You don't have to buy the game again, right? You don't have to buy the PlayStation 5 version of the game or the Xbox Series X version of the game in this case. You could just use the old games and get whatever current upgrades exist for those games. Uh, Microsoft shows us they won't hold back a backwards compatible title just because it has a remaster. So the Halo games are backwards compatible even though the Master Chief Collection exists. Gears 1 is backward compatible, even though the Gears Ultimate Remaster exists, etc. So you can play the original games on Xbox Series X and the remastered versions, not just forcing people to use the ones that might be have been modified from the original if you prefer the original. Great news for people who own an Xbox Series X. Multiple available subscription options. So they have allowed EA Access as an example. EA Access is basically like Game Pass for EA games. Um, and... It's honestly, if you love EA games, there's almost no reason not to have EA access. Uh, plus, you get uh, all the demos and early access to games and all that. EA access is a nice program, and PlayStation, for some reason, wouldn't let it be on their platform. Don't know why. And obviously, we know about Game Pass. Game Pass is literally the greatest, like, I don't know. It's one of the greatest things in gaming, if we're completely honest. Like, one of the best budget oriented, gamer friendly models. And we now know that Microsoft isn't even making money off it. So, like, it's very pro consumer what they're doing with Game Pass. Um, all of the first party titles are there on launch day and date with Game Pass. So, Game Pass subscribers aren't being held back from people that go out and buy physically day one. Um, all with a few exceptions, I believe, of the first party titles have free cross play with Windows 10. Obviously, the games that are on Windows 10. Um, have crossplay free for free. No, no extra subscription fee for that. Although they've made new first party investments and it's expected the vast majority of their titles will be exclusive to Xbox slash Windows 10, they occasionally have their own first party published games releasing on Steam, Ori, Killer Insect, etc. They also had Ori come to Switch. Cuphead is, uh, was exclusive and is out on Switch and PlayStation 4. So they're more open to letting their games get in front of more eyeballs. Uh, not Maybe not their big AAA stuff, but uh, very interesting. Related to the above point, they didn't try to force Gearbox to cut PlayStation 4 out of the We Happy Few release, uh, a game made by one of their new first-party devs, Compulsion Games. And they allowed Ninja Theory to complete a PlayStation 4 HDR patch for Hellblade, and they continue to release Minecraft on all consoles. Again, this is all stuff Microsoft doesn't have to do. They own the, all this stuff. They could just make it all exclusive, and they're like, no, finish it up. Like, we want it's it's pro consumer for you to finish up the stuff you were already doing and to keep Minecraft a cross platform game and not exclusive to Windows and, and, uh, and Microsoft. Plus, obviously, they make a lot of money doing this. Some of this is obviously for monetary reasons. Leaving Minecraft on everything is beneficial to Microsoft, too. However, it would be beneficial to force people to buy Microsoft systems. So very interesting move on their part. They offer free cloud saves, not part of the subscription service, not part of Xbox Live Gold. You just get it for free. Nintendo charges for it. PlayStation charges for it. Microsoft does not. 100% free cloud save. Created the adaptive controller, which is widely recognized as the king of accessibility controllers. Uh, for those who don't know what the adaptive controller is, um, that is basically a controller for handicapped people. Um, a, with, with various attachments. It can get a little pricey at times, but it's nice that there's an actual option out there. And reviews of the adaptive controller are like way sky high. Like it, it is truly um, a nice piece of technology uh, for people who are disabled in various different ways to enjoy video games. Um, and in the rumor mill, this is all rumored stuff that isn't fully announced or announced at all. Rumored to be providing full backwards compatibility support for Xbox One era with their next-gen console. So PlayStation 5 is only, it has said, a lot of the games from PlayStation 4 are backwards compatible, but not all of them. Um, Suppose the Xbox Series X will be backwards compatible with every Xbox One game. Uh, rumored to be giving non-4K TV owners the chance to buy a cheaper 1080p version of the Series X. Um... I don't know if that's a Series S or, or, or what that is, but it's a rumor out there that basically if you don't need the power to push 4K, you can still get the same visuals, fidelity, but get it on a 1080p screen. Um, again, Xbox Series X, I, I, or Xbox Series S, I believe, is the one they're talking about there. It's rumored that xCloud will be included with Game Pass Ultimate. 
Um, so basically, you, you can get, have Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate, and if you get the Ultimate subscription, which is a little bit more expensive, um, you get xCloud service included with it, uh, which will allow people to play Xbox games from anywhere, tablet, PC, phone, etc., any supported platform. They would like to see PlayStation and Switch supported as well. Right now, that's not in the cards, but they would like to see that happen. And obviously, we'll have free online multiplayer soon if the rumors are to be believed. As you can see, this is all crazy good news for consumers. Microsoft, you know, I, all three of these companies, let, let's not kid ourselves, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, they exist to make money. They are, they are for-profit entities. Everything they do, even if it seems pro-consumer, is with the eye on the prize of making more money long haul. They lose money on Game Pass now, hoping to have enough subscribers down the line to be like Netflix and just dominate, and they make so much money um, that it, it ends up not mattering, and the, and the losing money now is a long-term investment gain. Um, and that's fine, but it's interesting that like Microsoft is just hitting the ground running with all of these pro consumer moves. And it's really credit to Phil Spencer because this all started with Phil Spencer because they entered this generation anti-consumer mixed messaging on the Xbox one, not launching the Xbox one without connect, even though connect wasn't in high demand, which led to the console being a hundred dollars more expensive than the PlayStation four, like mixed messaging on, is this a multimedia box or is it a video game box that has multimedia functionality? Like it's fine to have multimedia functionality, but why are you focusing on that when you're launching a video game console? Everyone's got Roku's or other things, smart TVs to handle multimedia. Multimedia should be a secondary feature, not a primary one, but they treated it like it was this big deal that you could watch live sports through your Xbox. Like, okay, cool. That's is cool. I use the TV pass through on the Xbox one, but I, okay. It's not really why you buy one, right? So I think that there's just a lot of things that they messed up with Xbox one, but then Phil Spencer took over. And from that point forward, it's been pro-consumer move after pro-consumer move after pro-consumer move. And apparently the biggest pro-consumer move of all right now, getting rid of the subscription model for online multiplayer that they started getting back to the PC early console routes where online was free. And thank God for that. I am so happy that Microsoft is doing this. And I know that it might come across as a Microsoft shill, but I think this is like an example setter. I hope this is a trend setter. They set the trend to charge for it. Now they're getting rid of it. I hope that's, that Sony's paying attention here. And if this is officially announced and confirmed in one of these August events, that Sony comes on like, hey, we're going to drop our subscription fee too. Of course, Sony's probably not going to do that because right now they don't have any other subscription fee service out there that's worth a damn to try to make money off of. Uh, they make their subscription money off of the PlayStation Network stuff. Whereas Xbox has Game Pass, you know, with 10 million plus subscribers already. They're hoping to gain even more subscribers with xCloud. So like Microsoft is going all in with their consumer friendly services uh, that ultimately lead to higher profitability in the end if they can get enough consumers partaking in it um, versus what obviously uh, the old model was, which is they wanted a recurring revenue stream through charging for online multiplayer. Now they're they're done with that. They're like done with that. I don't know if that what, what that means for the games the gold service. They probably are going to do away with that, I assume, because they put all these games on Game Pass now. They don't really need to do the games of gold. They could just everything could just be on Game Pass. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty stoked in general uh, that Microsoft is doing this, and um, this is kind of like a, a a shots fired kind of thing. Like yeah, we might not have the price of the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation Five yet, but Microsoft is like throwing another hey, look. Like, hey, Halo Infinite, yeah, we hear you, all this stuff. I know it's kind of controversial, but hey, guess what? Bam, ba bam, free online. Like, it's a big move. Is it going to be the kind of move that's going to make Xbox Series X sell more than the PlayStation 5? Probably not, because play Sony's got a, a, a wider worldwide market popularity with their platforms. So does Nintendo. Um, but, but... This, could this get them back to like Xbox 360 levels where they're selling 60, 70, 80 million units of, of, of Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S? I, I think that's actually attainable if they keep this up. And if this doesn't work, if we live in a world where pro-consumer moves and releasing a bunch of quality games, because remember, they bought all these studios out to, to, to get more and more high-quality um, semi-exclusive games between Windows and Xbox. Like, if this doesn't work out for them, then what does that say for consumers where we're always asking these companies to to do things to make games better like we they, like for years and years and years microsoft was criticized for a lack of um exclusive system games and so they went on and bought a bunch of high quality studios and we've already seen some fruits of the labor in the most recent xbox showcase like if we're not willing to reward a company for listening to consumers and making all these pro-consumer moves with Game Pass and xCloud, which we presume xCloud will be 
pretty pro consumer, at least better than what we got from Google Stadia. Um, and then obviously, you know, listening to consumers where we don't want to pay for online, like it's ridiculous that us that already pay for online like internet services that we have to also pay to access the internet again just to play games online like they're listening now with that and getting rid of that like microsoft should be rewarded in my opinion with our money um you know that doesn't mean don't buy a playstation 5 i'm just saying that like Microsoft is doing everything they can to build consumer trust and if they can't gain consumer trust by making pro consumer moves then what does that say about us as consumers um, and maybe our inability to get away from brand loyalty at times? Uh, that being said, I do plan to own an Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5 on launch day, plus give one away so you guys know what's up with that. Um, if Unless people decide they want to switch instead, of course, that's always an option. Better on my pocketbook too, but I am more than willing to, to get a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or a gift card for one uh, out to a winner if we hit 50,000 subscribers. Again, the giveaway has not started. There's no way to enter right now. This is a, hey, if we hit 50K, that's our big celebration giveaway. And God knows, you know, if we hit 100K, I mean, what, do I give away like three of them, four of them? <laughs> that would be nuts. That would be nuts. I will say, if we hit 100K, there'll, there'll be something special going on. But uh, thank you guys for, for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, kudos to Microsoft for what you're doing. And we'll catch all of you guys in the next video.